Hey y'all, welcome to Girl Talk. How y'all feeling today? Waiting for the viewers to start. Coming on in. What's good? We're gonna wait about five minutes. How y'all doing? What y'all drinking? This is still girl talk. What's in your cups? What's up, everybody? I see y'all waving. How y'all doing? What y'all drinking? That's what I want to know right now. What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, today we have two special guests coming on today. Two black female attorneys. I'm so excited to hear from you guys. Um, I hope you guys got your questions ready. Um, and let's do this. I want to wait about five minutes so everybody come on in. Um, I see the request, D. Just give me a second. Um, how y'all doing today? Let me talk to my crowd. What y'all drinking today? How's everybody day going? Um, I don't want anybody to be scared to ask any questions. Um. I don't think that it's very common all the time for us to meet female attorneys that's our age, that's doing their thing, um, somebody that we can talk to, somebody that we can relate to. Um, it should be very, very, very good. It is going to be very, very, very good. Um, margaritas. Everybody drinking margaritas. What's today? Today's Sunday. Margarita. I'm drinking Henny. I'm off tomorrow. Today is my Friday. So, what's up? Um, I'm going to go ahead and let them join in. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Margaritas. Everybody drinking margaritas. What kind? Okay. Hey, y'all. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all see me? Yes, you got super low. Hold on. Your volume just changed on us. Yeah. Oh, wrong direction. Girl, you here? All right. I don't think it requires <laughs> two people. How many attorneys in terms what? of volume? <laughs> well, hello, <laughs> ladies. Let me make sure everything, yes. Okay, cool. Oh, How are you guys just, doing just today? No, I didn't. I turned it Tell to you. Don't worry. What's up? What's up? What's no, up? Stop. <laughs> What are you ladies drinking? Um, you know, a little bartender or whatever. Not okay. black on. I wish we could have got a black on wine, but we were short on time. So we winding down. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, I want to welcome it. you guys to Girl Talk. Thanks welcome. For Thanks for being on the show. Um, we really appreciate this. Um, okay. So you guys are two female attorneys. Can you tell us a little about what you guys do? You got it. Whoever want to start. <laughs> um, so yes, I am an attorney. I practice. I work in. I practice finance law. Like I work in capital markets. Um, so, I don't know if um, they can kind of chef. Can I move up a little bit? Oh, the volume is low. Okay. Oh yeah. I Definitely. want everybody to be able to hear you. I want everybody to get this knowledge. I want it to be clear. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can yes. You hear me now? Am I yelling or? No, you sound good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, I'm an attorney. I work. Um, I work in finance specifically. Uh, I work. My practice area is like investments, finance, and capital markets. <laughs> investments, okay. finance, and capital markets. So, I work at like an investment company, an asset manager to be specific. So I work in finance. Just to keep. So you work in finance. Yes. U D Danielle. Um, I, so I am, I guess we're, we really are completely different. So I work with a bunch of brands. I help people protect their brands, start companies up. Um, I can give you the technical terms. I do business law, um, you know, entertainment law. I do, um, soft IP, so trademark copyrights and also do estate planning. So that part of our practice is helping people protect their legacy, pass on their legacy, and all of that. So I work with brands and families, just protecting the assets and preserving it and passing it on. 
So basically, both you ladies are Chinese, but you do completely different things, it sounds like. Um, <laughs> completely different, I, yes. <laughs> I feel like most times when people hear that, you know, you're an attorney, that you're a lawyer, that you think that the person's in the courtroom. Yes. Right. And neither one of us know. And neither one of you. So one is in front. Do you know what my court? I mean, when I first started, I was doing litigation. I was doing consumer debt litigation. Oh. And um, I did a little bit of landlord tenant. And yeah, it's not my thing. But, <laughs> okay. Did yeah, you guys courtesy. always know that there were different types of um things that you can do within law or is that something you learned while being in college uh i think as time went on we learned i'm not gonna say always because as a, like you know prior to being an attorney and even prior like as growing up i thought that all lawyers were in the courtroom you know right. like the same way that most people think i also thought all lawyers knew all areas of law you know right. just like many people do um but once you get into law school I mean, even prior to, but once you get into law school, for sure, you understand the, the nuances in practicing law. And okay. so when, when Danielle mentioned earlier that when she first started uh, practicing law, she was a litigator. There are two like ways to kind of look at practicing law. You have a transactional attorney and then you have a litigation attorney. And can, can you break those two down just in case people don't yeah. know what that is? Yeah. So the litigation attorney, that's a person that goes to the courtroom. So when they say they litigate, they actually go before a judge. You know, they're the ones who will go in the courtroom, do all those, those documents. They're what you normally see on television. A okay. transactional attorney, which me and, excuse me, Nancy, me and Danielle are both transactional attorneys. We are, we're the persons who like, like negotiate your contracts or draft your contracts. Or like like Danielle said, Danielle does a uh, business formation. So like Danielle's the person that you would go to to like start up your business. But if you ever got into the situation where you needed to go to court, you needed to sue somebody, you wouldn't call either one of us. Cause we okay, don't, we right. don't. Do I'm that. gonna help you stay out of court. So yeah. Make so sure you help. Correct. So basically, okay. So you help people stay out of court. We. Yeah. You guys, I cannot help you with court. So if anybody no. wants to ask, you get oh, up, can don't you call us? We're not the ones. So you. <laughs> So you're not the ones for that? No. Okay. Um, I'm glad you said that because I really feel like most times that's all. If you never was told if your family isn't in that business, you don't really know. Um, so thank you for breaking that down. Um, is there a difference between a lawyer and an attorney? Just, just ask it. Because I've heard different terms. I don't know if it means the same exact thing or if it's the same. So, all right, so anyone who goes to law school, they say is a lawyer, right? Okay. Um, like you graduate law school. Some people make the distinction, once you pass the bar, which is an exam that you take after law school, um, okay. to say whether or not you could be licensed in whatever state that you're taking the bar, they say after you um, take that bar exam and pass that bar exam, you're an attorney then. Oh, but okay. Yeah, so they use, yeah, they use them, um, um, no, when you're admitted, you're right. So you pass the bar, you get admitted, um, so they use them interchangeably, and people call me a lawyer. I don't feel disrespected at all. It's okay. you know just the terms are used interchangeably. Right. Most people don't know. And just obviously, I didn't know that was for me. I didn't actually know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so this is not like a stupid question. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. Um. So growing up, where, what, what, where, where are you guys from? South side, you heard? <laughs> South side of where, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, South side, we from Mount Vernon. I mean, I'm from Mount Vernon. I'm not going to speak to Danielle, whatever. Please don't. I'm from Mount Vernon. I was born in Jacoby Hospital, but I was, I came here three days. I'm not. <laughs> I was, yeah, I'm, I'm from Mount Vernon. <laughs> so you're from Mount Vernon, and Danielle, where are you from? I was raised in Mount Vernon. Um, I was born in the Bronx. I raised in Mount Vernon. So I was here since I was six. Okay. So does it, is it, I don't feel like it's a usual thing, well, at least for in our community, to have a really good friend that's also an attorney. Do you guys think that's a plus for you guys to have somebody to be able to re relate to 
and maybe ask questions about uh, to ask questions in case you guys don't know any something since y'all are friends before so yeah our practice areas uh don't overlap too much um, okay but i definitely think it's beneficial like i've called you on plenty of times but you know as professional black woman period i suffer from imposter syndrome every now and again so i having siobhan as a friend like in this space is yes. good for me because i can call her and say yo i'm dealing with this and she can relate um not that my other friends can't relate it's just that she has a first-hand experience with being an attorney and understanding the pressures of the job etc same yes. and uh i call danielle for all sorts of stuff because <laughs> she do all the things <laughs> i don't do so um, I think it's it's just helpful. It's really helpful. And even with uh, not speaking like professionally, like when we're going out to like networking events, you kind of want a support system and you right. want to know, because unfortunately, you know, not all skin folk is kin folk. So, you know, you're going to these events and, you know, you want to network, you want to meet people. And it's nice to have like your real friend there where you can like, yo, just come with me. Right. We can kind of, I, I can politic for you, you can politic for me. And it, it just works out. It does, That's a it blessing, is. honestly. No, for real. Siobhan is a walking business card. I swear to God, I don't have to bring cards or nothing. She'll be like, oh, Danielle has her own firm. Danielle does this. And oh, like, she's yes, it. Siobhan. Like, thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you, girl. I'm so glad mm -hmm. you came. Like, it's a lifesaver <laughs> on my part because, because I work, I am an attorney, right? So many people think of attorneys, like you said, the courtroom attorneys, but then there are people who recognize that you need an attorney to do you know, like business formation, contract work, so on and so forth. But I work in finance. What I do is very, very nuanced. So I do have people that come to me and they're just like, hey, Siobhan, I need you to do this. And I'm like, I don't do that. But guess what? I have a homegirl. Right. <laughs> she does it all. You know, I, even the other day, I had a family member reach out to me about wills. I don't know nothing about wills. I had Danielle create a will for my mother. <laughs> if I could have okay. did it myself, I would have paid her to do it. And yes, I paid her. Because that's her craft. Okay. Um, and I paid her to do it. So I'm just like, I, I don't know nothing about that. So to me, I'm like, I want to be able to recommend someone. And I want to recommend someone who I know is knowledgeable and who cares about, you know, the person that, that I'm rec recommending them to. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'm and i glad to have a friend that I can do that with. Oh, that is beautiful. Um, I just want to welcome everybody to Girl Talk. I see that we have some new viewers coming in, some new faces. I hey, welcome. Eva. I hope you guys have your drinks in your hand. Um, right now, we're sitting down with Danielle and Siobhan, two attorneys. We're getting some um, new news on this kind of stuff. Uh, I just want them to educate us on certain things. If you have any questions, um, write them down. Um, there's a question box at the bottom of your screen where you can write stuff so down, and I will surely ask them the questions. Uh, that's why they um, Oh, my hat. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, we just recognize. Go ahead. Yeah, are we in the frame? We're trying to make sure that we're both in the frame. Um, huh? She said in high school. Girl, you got that Ooh, Teddy Riley Wi-Fi. Uh-uh. <laughs> You're breaking up. Let's back. Let me push it back. Okay. We can't hear you. You want us to uh, exit out the live and come back? Oh, okay. Now she's. Yeah, we can hear you now. Mm, my God, the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, we, we didn't hear a word you said.
process of becoming an abortion. Oh, Shani, oh, you back. back, girl. We were waiting on you, honey. We were waiting on you. <laughs> I'm here. Thanks for keeping it going like Jill Scott. <laughs> um, what was you guys saying? Did I miss out on? No, Nothing. Nothing. Go ahead. We were trying to figure out what we should talk about. Okay. Sorry for that, guys. Welcome to Girls Talk. You know, things happen. Um, so I recently, <laughs> I recently read something that said um, in school, the girls that always talk too much all became successful. How were you guys in high school? Were you guys like the mean girls, athletic girls? Um, wow. Describe your... Do this. <laughs> I don't think I was mean in high school. Was you <laughs> always like, like in high school, was you like, all right, I'm going to be an attorney and this is what I have to do Absolutely and not. I'm not going to mess up and I'm straightforward and just tell us, you know, how was it? Like, she is. This is about you. Mm -hmm. It's your show. You could go ahead. No, no, you got it, sis. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to take it home. You got it. <laughs> Denisha so said, no, pick me not. and I'll tell it. I do um, Apple AKB said, Danielle was a mean girl. Wow, mind your business. Uh, you know, one action. Someone said, pick me, pick me, I die. <laughs> I I mean, just because mean. I think that sometimes... No, 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 let's be clear, Niche. We have beef. I wasn't mean. You just were my friend. There's a difference. Um, you I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right. I wasn't mean in high school, but I also wasn't planning on being an attorney in high school. Um, I think in high school, I was really just trying to have fun. Like, I literally, it was kind of sad how calculated I was about just passing. Like, I remember in my mind, I thought, okay, not in my mind, I actually did the math. Like, if you showed up to class at the high school, the lowest grade you could get was a 55. So I did the math that if I got like 90s the first two quarters, I could get 55s the last quarter and still pass. Like, and that's like, I'm like, oh, I can get 55s when it's warm. So I can barely go to class and I can still pass. And that's, that's the kind of student I was in high school. So that should give y'all some hope. Like, that is hilarious that you thought like that because yeah. at the end of the day, you still calculated things out if you think about it. Let me get all 90s so then I can get 55. Yeah, while it's cold, I'm going to be focused and do my homework and go to class. But as soon as it turns warm, I'm turning up. So yeah. basically, you don't have to be perfect in high school. Mm. Um, life no. still happens. That's what I'm just trying to get at. That, you know, sometimes people think you have to be perfect in high school. I was doing this. I was doing that. Um, I never messed up. Um, think life happens, basically. Oh, yeah, and I talk all Chef the time. still talk. Um, anyway. We, we but let Danielle answer the question, though. We're not going to let her skip. Go. No, she said what was the answer. No. Nope. All right. So How was you in high school, Danielle? What did you say? How was you in high school? I was incredibly popular. I was an athlete. And I'm not proud of it, but I also was a bully. But um, I changed. I'm a new person. So, uh, but I think, like, I always, like, I was always a good student. It just came, like, naturally to me. So, I, I thought I wanted to be a sports agent. And it wasn't until I actually got to law school that I realized that, it's not really a career for me. Um, okay. So I, but all of my steps, like, were semi-calculated. Like, I knew I wanted to go. I ended up going to Columbia because I knew I wasn't going to play professionally, right? So it was like I wanted to get the best education I could using basketball as a means. Um, so, yeah, it was, like, it was different. I thought that was true. Damn, tall girls are always bullies. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you, wow, you still mad about the space game? <laughs> um, guys, welcome to Girl Talk. I think that you guys are still coming in. Right now, I'm talking with Danielle and Siobhan, um, two attorneys, um, and we're loving this. Um, are you guys the first attorneys in your family, or is it something that a long line of attorneys? Um, I'm the first in my family. I'm actually not the first in my family. Uh, my older sister's an attorney, um, but that didn't really influence me. But I will say this. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't influence But I did follow her, though. You when followed she... me. Let's get this. Let's put this. So, wait. So, wait. So, who was the attorney first? <laughs> she was an attorney first. Who Who's born first? No, you were Did you tell her we got the same person? I didn't. <laughs> so, was not born first. Let's right. be clear. Come on. So, wait. You guys also have the same birthdays? Huh? 
You guys the also have birthday. the same birthdays? I was born first. She, she decided wasn't born she first. wanted to come out. Absolutely like, not. She's been following me her whole Let's life. Be clear. I'm not even going to entertain this conversation. because So y'all kind of like the same person. No, we well, not. We're obviously not. not. <laughs> we don't even have the same area. <laughs> so then y'all was an attorney Moving first. On. Anyway, that wasn't the question. The question is, Ooh. my older sister's an attorney. <laughs> okay. So you followed your sister? <laughs> Somewhat. Like, I, okay. I, did, I knew when I decided to be an attorney, I didn't know, um, I didn't really know what to do, which I think okay. a lot of us face is like, you know, if you want to do something, the first question is like, well, how do I do this? Um, so I didn't know what to do. So my sister majored, had a certain undergrad major. She did certain things to become an attorney. So I decided, when I decided to become an attorney, I was going to do what she did, um, which is what happened. But prior to that, I, I think I had this conversation with you. Um, I was speaking to a young lady the other day, and she asked me what I do randomly. And I told her, and her, ma her jaw dropped. And it made me realize, like, yo, when I was this young lady's age, I didn't know any Black female attorneys. Um, okay. And I think that's pretty important because like, I, I actually normally hesitate to tell people what I do, um, but I, I recognize how important the representation is because growing up, I did know black female doctors, but I did not know any black female attorneys until my sister became an attorney. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know. Um, I didn't know any black female attorneys. Um, yeah, until I, I got into the field and. I'll be honest, like not having that representation played a, a major role in my life because I didn't know how, I, I felt like I had to be something like that I saw on TV, like okay. super, super serious, super professional. Like I didn't have anyone who's kind of like us, like chill, lay back, do rest of things with your friends, right. but also could be professional. You know what I mean? How to so, get away with murder wasn't on yet. You ain't see it in the least. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to. Anybody, you can't stomach it. But not. But on top of it, not just that. I'm talking about like even the matriculation component or like the going through undergrad component. Thinking about what your major should be. Thinking about how to apply to law school. Danielle was a very big help for me when I was applying to law school. When I was applying to law school, me. I didn't follow you. I asked you for advice. <laughs> because you know what it is. I was waitlisted at a school, and the school literally said to me, you know. If we are waitlisted, you don't need to write us. We'll let you know if if you if you um if you'll be admitted. Oh look, Althea, she went to law school with me as well. So what's up, y'all? Um, they they were like, you know, you're waitlisted. Don't worry, we'll let you know if you get in. Danielle was like, no, you need to let them know that you're still interested in going to the school. Yes, okay. Did. Yes, you did. You said so it. big sis helped. She helped. She's not the big sis. She is wow. younger than me. So we'll leave her home. <laughs> And so, because she did that, I wrote her. I wrote in the school, and then months later, I called, and I said, you know, how do you choose off your wait list? She said, well, first, we get part of some people who let us know that they were still interested in attending. And I'm like, there's no way I would have known that, you know? Okay. I didn't know how to pick a law school. My sister was the one like, hey, rent, list your schools by ranking, you know, and try to get into the, like, try to go to the school with the highest with the highest ranking. Now, okay. in retrospect, I also should have taken into consideration the cost of attending the school. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> pause, no. Chef. Pause. Let's answer you some questions. Pause. Pause. <laughs> Everybody, welcome exactly. to Girl Talk. I'm on with Siobhan and Danielle right now, two female, black, powerful, beautiful attorneys. Uh, we have a question. Um, since you guys, like you said, you didn't really know anything, Danielle, you had to kind of figure out who to be. Does that make you want to influence? To mentor young people, absolutely, absolutely, and absolutely. I think I think a lot of so we're we're very similar in this way. Like we believe in giving back to the community. We believe in like you know showing up, showing out, so people actually know like you can do these things. So Siobhan does a lot of work. Like she does like the career prep stuff with um, the nonprofit she works with, Homegrown. Okay, and, like all of that is helpful, right? So I did a presentation like how to start a business, right? Mm -hmm. Because Black women can start businesses. Black people in general can start businesses. Ownership is important in the community. So definitely think like um, that's why we do that because we have to show up. We have to let people know like there's other things out here. Um, you know, they'll pigeonhole you to a few, a few okay. jobs they think black people should have. So, so Danielle, you have your own business? 
I do. So I, I run my firm. It's called The Brown Firm. You can follow us at The Brown Firm. Um, but it's we're about to make three years since I launched. Um, and I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And if they go on your site, they can, they can learn what you Everything. do. How could you help them? They can ask yep. you questions. Well, you can um, ask questions on the site, but I do have a chat on the site. So if you want assistance, you can work through the chat on the site and it'll give you some assistance, help you schedule a consultation and things like that. But you can learn about all my practice areas on my site, even on social media. I post a lot of free, um, like gems, things people don't know. Okay. So, you know, you can follow us on social media. I'll put it in the, um, the chat. And yeah. Um, I know you guys said that you have the same birthday. How old are you guys, if you don't mind? Wow, oh, how does, all right. How <laughs> long have you guys been attorneys? I've been an attorney for four years. I've been an attorney for seven years. Um, you have to say it like that. I'm just saying, you've been following forever. <laughs> but I've been trying right to up. tell you. I mean, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to figure out what age... Did you guys become an attorney? Because I think that it's amazing. I mean, I'm 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 speaking that you guys are maybe just 29 or something like that, and that oh, sweet. <laughs> and <laughs> that you know you started young. <laughs> um, you started young. Life wasn't perfect, but you made it, and you're doing your thing. So I'm just trying to give an yeah, so I, I passed the bar at 25. Wow. And I was 28. But so I went, I went straight through, right? Most people do like what Siobhan did, take a few years off and get real okay. life experience. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you because you're about, no, sorry to interrupt you, you but you're about to um, oh. tell them the process if you're going to tell them that. Um, there's mad process. There's no, there's no single singular process and just take that through life. Everybody's okay. process is different. So Danielle went straight through Ivy League, straight to law school, beautiful. And you know what? That's a result of thinking through high school, what you wanted to do with yourself. And my flightiness from high school translated into undergrad. So, okay. um, so you I, start with undergrad. Uh, yeah. So I went to undergrad. I flunked out because I was, I was flighty. I never went to class. You was and what? I went, I'm sorry. I, I flunked out because I was flighty. Okay. I didn't go to class. That's not really true. What what it is is she got new experiences and her mom was blown being out of, outside of New York. So like I moved to Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> and if y'all moved to Atlanta, y'all know what it is. Okay. Right. You young, you in Atlanta, you in a different state. Right. You different kind of guys. She graduated early. I graduated early from high school. Went to Clark Atlanta. Whoop whoop. Eva, what up? I went to Clark Atlanta. I did so poorly that I lost my financial aid. And then I came home. I went to WCC. I got my associate's degree. Did really well there. Then I went to Pace. I uh, got a scholarship at Pace University. So I finished undergrad at Pace. I was working full-time the entire time. I worked a full-time job through WCC, worked a full-time job through Pace University, intern. Like, I was sleeping four hours a day, okay, to make up for the type of person I was in high school <laughs> okay. and in college. So I think it's important for people to recognize, like, if you're focused, you can do well, and you can move forward into whatever you want to do. Not seamlessly. It's not that she didn't go through adversity because Danielle went through it, but, you know, she was able to finish at 25. Right. right? But you can also was, always bounce back. Right? But you can bounce back, but you have to be focused. So I spent a lot of time making up for the bullshit that I allowed myself to enter into in my earlier years. And so by the time I finished undergrad and, and finally went to law school, I was 25 by the time I got into law school. Okay. But yeah, undergrad then law school. So is that like lessons learned kind of thing for you? Like you, made, you was in school, you did what you did, <laughs> and then you fixed it. Absolutely. So I just want everybody to know that there's always hope. Just because we fall down does not mean we can't get back up. Facts. Siobhan I mean, is living proof of that. I don't think she fell down. I think that was just her path. She stumbled. Like, right. Okay. Yeah. I don't I'm saying she didn't give up, though. Yeah. She didn't give up. She didn't stop going to school. She even went to a community college. Some people say, oh, I don't want to go to community college. Da, 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 da. That's a downgrade. Da, da, da. Siobhan went, and she still finished, and she succeeded. Right? And she's one of the smartest people I know, like, legit. Okay, yeah. smarty pansies. I mean, you know, I don't get real confident. So I know. I'm very excited <laughs> about 
Oh, what are you guys' birthdays? What sign are y'all? You know what we are. I don't know <laughs> y'all. I don't know tax y'all. Day. Aries. Tag Aries. 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 So shout out to all Aries. Um, whoop, whoop. We celebrating in August, yes. All Aries. Even though y'all birthdays was canceled. No. no. What's wrong Postponed. With you? I just Post- told you we celebrate. Everybody August. can be Sagittarius. Shout out to all no, my Sagittarius out there. <laughs> I mean, Do you guys are um, I All right, moving want- on. What? <laughs> I said, moving on. Next question. I'm done. Okay. Gang, gang. I see Apple AKBs. You heard? <laughs> you crazy. Yeah, um, welcome to Girl Talk, everybody. <laughs> I'm here with Siobhan and Danielle. Um, we're just going over a few things. They are attorneys. Um, they're great. Um, look, look them up on Instagram. They're on Facebook. Um, very, very good girls. Women. Have you <laughs> women? Sorry, women to get boobs. Okay. <laughs> have you guys got any weird reactions? What was the weirdest? Have you guys got any weird reactions when you told people that you are attorneys? Like, do sometimes people be like, oh, or like, you see them starting to kind of treat you different? Does that happen to you guys? First of all, yes. Um, microaggressions are very real. I one time I went to the doctor and he was like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm an attorney. He was like, like a paralegal? Like, no, like an attorney. I said what I said. Don't ask right. Like, what? <laughs> but, I mean, in in all walks of life, like, people are shocked. Um, yeah, I don't know what the answer was. No, same. Same. I mean, it goes in all various ways. So, I like to keep it humble. So, like, when I first graduated law school, I, um, I couldn't find a job. I had a hard time. So, I used to actually deliver food. Okay. Many people don't know this. And so um, I was delivering food after law school, and uh, people were very rude to me, you know? But then when I would go to, like, social outings and I'd tell people I'm an attorney, they, like, treat me with so much revere, and that annoyed me because I'm not a class. I'm not an elitist, so that shit bothered me. So there, okay. were, there were people who treat me like, like, I guess my opinion is worth listening to because I have this degree, and I, I don't think – what you do should validate you. You know, there are intelligent people in all on all right. aspects of life. And then you have on the flip side people who like Danielle, I had a coworker who she didn't know what department I worked in in the company and I told her I worked in legal and she's like, Well what do you do in legal? And I was like, Well what does one do in legal? <laughs> like, you know, and so she mm-hmm. immediately assumed that I was like an admin. Not that there's anything wrong with being an admin, but I think it's interesting that people look at women of color and assume assume that we're you know that we're just answering no 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 let me not do that right they're just assuming they they, they don't assume that we're attorneys you know okay. you can say you're an attorney or a lawyer and they just automatically just like oh but are you really though you know and right. so um i've had both sides of the uh, uh i could i can totally relate to that i feel like um when i'm in clothes like this people you know hi and nah, nah. But if I show up in a uniform or something like that, I get free food. People's opening the door for me. People's being very sweet. And I'm like, and sometimes I be confused, like, what's going on? And I look at my clothes and I say, oh, like, mm-hmm. well, thank you. Um, I went to a restaurant before. They was, they was kind of rude to me, um, just not, like, attentive. And then my coworker wanted to go. We had, we was on break, so we had to go in our uniform. The same guy's like, oh, my God, I give you 15% off, and um, what do you guys need? And I'm just looking at him like, wow. I like, wish they would do that for the attorneys. Look, they need a, they need a uniform <laughs> You need attorney, an attorney on your shirt. I want 15% off, too. <laughs> you need, you, we're never given benefit of the doubt, yes. Um, do all. you think that um, in your field, is it a male-dominated field, or is it, do you think it's even? It is definitely. So, I'm inclined to say it's a male-dominated field. I don't really know the numbers. Um, you know, I feel like there's been a shift. Um, yeah, screw it. It's a male-dominated field. Absolutely. Okay, as black women, do you think that sometimes it's a little bit harder for you guys? Or Danielle trying to get clients? Or Siobhan having, you know, working on people's stuff? Do they, like, oh, the black girl? Like, do you feel like sometimes people, like, judge you before they know what you really can do absolutely 
I think I work, so I work in finance. So it's first, it's very male dominated, and then it's very okay. And when you say you work in finance, chef, mm -hmm. for the people that want to know, can you just break it down a little bit? Like, what do you do? Can you help the people, or is it something that it's it's very complicated? So, um, I uh, okay. Yeah, it's complicated, Shanice. It's it's going. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I do. I I mainly negotiate transactions. So the company that I deal with, they're they're an investment manager. So like, if say you have your four hundred one k, just to keep it simple. You have your four hundred one k. You have fifty thousand dollars in your four hundred one k. Someone has to invest that fifty thousand dollars so that you get a rate of return. Like you want to get ten percent on that fifty thousand dollars so that when you retire, that's like a million dollars, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so what I do is I assist, I support my company in trying to invest that money. So they're okay. trying to invest that money. I look at this investment and I tell them, you know, what they're investing in, what the risks are. Like I, I'm looking over this transaction and I'm making like an assessment from a legal perspective um, on like the risks and what, you know, what could or could not happen and what our available remedies are, you know, in a worst case scenario. Okay. So it's a very white space. It's a very white male space, you know? Okay. Um, and so as a black woman, there's, um, you know, there's the imposter syndrome of like, you know, not knowing anything about finance prior to law school. And then also fighting to be heard. You know, okay. like I'll say something and people are just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then someone else will say the same thing. And I have to literally be like, I just said that. You okay. know, like I have to constantly, I, I hate the need, I hate that after time like you have to be affirmed by some other white person in the room right um by some other male in the room um in order for someone to take you seriously that happens quite often um and you work in the you work for yourself so what's your experience as yeah so so i don't have like the same like co-worker or superior issues because i work for myself but um i think in you know in the black community sometimes i think um and, you know, now there's a, a trend towards doing everything black, buying black, um, you know, spending, keeping your cash in, in the black community. Oh, that's what we're doing, the hookah, huh? Oh, uh, sorry, you couldn't get it right last night. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And um, I think for me, um, it, and I saw it when I was trying to get into the sports agency thing, um, I saw how people valued um, black the opinions and of white Jewish men, right? Okay. Uh, they, they saw them as top tier, um, more knowledgeable, um, looking out for their best interest type of thing. Honestly, I, I think that's a community thing. Um, I'm finding now, like, the more authentic I am in myself, the more clients want to work with me. Okay. Uh, and as I mentioned before, that was a struggle for me because I didn't have that representation. I didn't know how I was supposed to act or I thought I, I, thought I was supposed to act a particular way. Um, but now that I'm, like, stepping into who I fully am, I, I'm, my book business is booming. Um, <laughs> well, congratulations so. to you. Well, thank you. Congrats. So, um, and I hope <laughs> some of my followers go check out your page um, because the things you do can surely help us. Um, some things that we don't know how to do. We don't know how to ask a question. Um, we're confused about. I feel like that's the things that you may be able to help us with. Um, are you guys single? Or are you dating? Ooh, we got 18. You this is how you want to use it? You didn't even eat. We, we just, you know, you know, we're talking. This is this is girl talk. Everybody welcome right, to I'm girl single. talk. This is what we do. I'm saying um, I actually got cute in case you had a follower that I was Exactly, and I'm trying to put you on, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm single, yes. Um, Describe your perfect mate. Ooh, oh, describe your perfect mate. I love it. Um, <laughs> so I don't think this... All right, so I want someone who's willing to do the work. Like, we talk about it all the time. Like, I go to therapy consistently. I want someone to realize that they've experienced some trauma and is willing to work on it. I want someone... Um, ambitious. Um, I'm very ambitious, and for you to understand my lifestyle, you'll you'll have to possess a little bit of ambition. Um, normal stuff, nice, funny. Um, these days, I'm, I can, you can keep cute. I just need a nice. So you still need cute. <laughs> I'm getting, much, I'm getting too much for just one cute man. Look, uh, 
Shout out to my mama for joining on right now. I'm listening, y'all. Hey, Nisi. What's up, Nisi? <laughs> okay. How about you, Chef? Hey, Nisi. Hey, Nisi. Oh, I got a list. But it's definitely, I definitely need someone who's honest. Oh. Uh, someone. Mm. See? Clutch, yeah. Get your okay. life. You're I need right. someone who's honest. I need someone who is not scared of holding themselves accountable. I need someone who is, who respects autonomy. Um, creative, because I love that energy. I need someone who's knowledgeable. And ambitious is, is, a, is a great thing. Um, but I, I don't, I don't want it to be, I don't want anyone who's money hungry. I think money is important, but I don't think money no, is everything. You equate ambition with money. I, but not no, no, because a lot of people, you have your own people think that if they're chasing after money, that they're ambitious, and that's not the same. You know what I'm saying? Growth and 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 dollar, like growth, mentally growth, yeah, like a growth mindset, a growth key. mindset. Yeah, growth you mindset. cannot there be like, like you can't be okay. like, who I am. I'm not changing. Right. That's a growth mindset. Color. That's that's one of the things. So I, I think people just kind of equate the two. They think that they're getting money that they're just like ambitious. Like that's not the same. You know what I'm saying? You, money is right. Better, better. But um yeah, so those are the things that I uh enjoy. I read I read I somewhere do require a little, you know, a little look. <laughs> I'm gonna look at so, so so you with the looks. I'm with she, the look. Look, I I'm willing to give up the look. Give me somebody who ain't gonna lie. Who gonna be ambitious? Oh, don't steal my answer now. Oh, now who's Yo, following? Who? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with her. A I'm doctor. Doctor. Here we go. That's why you can't trust lawyers. Who's that attorney attitude? <laughs> a doctor, like the lingo. I I read an article that most successful women have a hard time dating. For me, I'll what's I'll it? start with that. I think sometimes because. Since we're young and we're doing our thing and um, we have goals that we're meeting, um, sometimes you don't always find people like that. And you have standards. And I feel like sometimes you may try to go below your standards to meet somebody, but then it end up like that doesn't work. They have to meet your standards and the things that you love because once things get old and um, you guys get settled in, the true person comes out. Do you believe that the more successful you are, the kind of harder it is to date? I would, yes, in some sense, but I would actually flip it because I think I've dated, like, okay, so my last relationship ended with the person telling me that they didn't feel like they were good enough for me. And I feel like I've actually dated quite a few people who have felt that way. Like, they felt inadequate because a lot of men don't want to date women that make more money than them. So that's, I mean... Point blank period. They they might say that, but you know, a lot of men aren't comfortable with that. And, okay. Um, so I I think I've dealt with that inadequacy feeling quite often, where I'm just and and then and unfortunately, what happens is like you don't want to make yourself small to make right. someone else feel comfortable. Am I speaking? No, you're speaking true. You know, like I don't want to be. I don't want to feel small. I don't want to try to feel. I don't want to you know, not buy the drink that I want to buy or buy the meal that I want to buy or go on a trip I want to go on because Maybe. it makes you, makes you feel small. And, and, but in the same breath, I don't want you to feel emasculated. You know what I'm saying? So instead of taking that as a challenge to like step up, step your game up or whatever, mm -hmm. and like financially, because we're just talking about money now, right? Um, I feel like a lot of guys step back. And they're just like, oh, you know, I feel like I don't add value. And value doesn't have anything to do with money. Right. Wait, so do you feel like you need to date someone who makes more money than you? No, no I don't. Who's I asking like the questions here? Oh, sorry. Who's, who's asking the questions here? Girl, 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 who's girl, asking girl, the girl, questions? Girl, what's up? I don't think that, but I feel like if you make less money than I do, don't be upset with me because you make less money than I do. Yeah. Kamoy, so, um, I'm reading the comments. Kamoy says um, she was dating somebody... Do you think sometimes that people compete with y'all that you date? Yes. Do they try to compete? So I've dated folks who tried to compete. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Do you believe <laughs> in dating people who may be making less money but trying to get on that level? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, like, money isn't, a, um, a, like, a, a factor for me, like, if you can make money and you can support yourself, good. Like I don't like I don't need your money. You know, I, I don't obviously like I'm, I'm five years, years to so the like, game. I'm, I'm good, right? I think it's more of the the insecurities that follow um, when someone makes less money. 
like it's it's probably more problematic for them than it is for me because if we go out on a date i don't order differently because you're paying um right like if anything i might offer to split the bill with you or something but i'm not okay. gonna order differently I, and me not ordering differently can make you feel like you know less of a you know less right manly um okay you know how they say that men are typically um less yeah. mature than women the one said she had to hide her successes because it felt like she was rubbing it in his face um, and that's true I don't it, feel it, that it, way. it's not that you want to hide but it, do you think do you think like it you, depends you, on the you person that you're dating so does what depend on the person that you're dating like you hiding your 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 money. Like she said, she felt like she had to hide her money. Oh, I'm not it's, hiding nothing. I've already been through that phase. I'm 30 now, 32. I'm I was not, about to say. Oh, I'm I was about to say. Be well, correct. I'm, 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 I'm in my 30s. I'm in my 30s. Are you both? 20s. You guys are 32. Yeah, we're 32. So you yeah. ladies are yeah, both 32, still very young, black, successful attorneys. So I can see why. Well, actually, I can't see why, but. I can see why people may be a little intimidated. What about intimidated? Yeah, um, not see why, but they have to live up to something. Um, do you find that you sometimes have to date older guys? Because you know I how they say, older. "Huh?" I always date older. It don't help. They they be just. That's what I was about to ask. Because you know how yeah. they say that guys are less mature than women. So sometimes do you yeah, think dating yeah. older people okay. helps that or it's still the same? I think people are people. I think everyone has their own process. I've talked to younger guys. I've talked to older guys. I don't think age is just cool positive. in the house. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> sit on mama lap. Oh my God, please stop. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Uh, but no, nah, I don't think age is dispositive. So age is not something yeah. that that you think matters. No. I mean, granted, you okay. be above 21 or 25. Well, right? I hope so. I don't know. I'm usually attracted to an older person. Um, I've You're always dated. <laughs> I've always <laughs> dated like at least eight years older than me. Um, but as far as emotional maturity, I, I find this no difference or i wouldn't know because i haven't dated folks my age so maybe there is a difference um, okay and i just don't know okay um i, I just want to welcome everybody to girl talk thank you for tuning in i hope you have your cups i'm um, with chilling i'm sitting here talking with danielle and siobhan two black female successful attorneys um if you have any questions you can write in the um hi to team selena I wouldn't even know about that. Um, <laughs> right in the question box, if have you have any questions, any comments, um, is there anything that you guys appreciate more about yourselves, or love more about yourself that you may have been? Um, teased about or talked about um you know how like example um females with what our lips you know they're big back in the day people made fun of it now everybody wants big lips big buzz is there anything that somebody may have said about you that now that you come to like love about yourself but since you both was bullies i don't know if that happened wow <laughs> Oh, right now. That's what you said. You took. Oh, oh no, that was Felicia. That is old. We stuff. moved on. It's been like fifteen years. Like Jesus. I was not a bully, but I don't really think I was teased like that either. I okay. mean, if I was, I wasn't aware. No, they used to crack jokes on my um my legs. They used to call me parentheses. I'm bow legs. So they used to call me parentheses. <laughs> well, can you stand up for us real quick, now? This thing on me right now. So there's that. Wow. I'm like, wait, that was so good. Bro. Like, um, Dango, everybody's saying you was a bully. I think you should apologize. <laughs> no, that's 15 years ago. Don't, don't, no, don't. I'm not apologizing. You are who you are, not who you were. She wasn't a bully. She just know what she wanted in life and she wanted to help you guys out. Um, sometimes getting bullied made you a stronger person. 
So most of you guys, Nisha, Whitney, whoever was being bullied, look at y'all. Y'all on top now. So thank Danielle. See how I flipped that? That's true. Good job, Shanice. I, I can't. You lucky I can't read these comments. She was nice though. to me. That's Kalima. What up, Kalima? Hey, Kalima. Yes, I was nice to you, honey. I was nice to all of them. They just hate haters. Right. Um. Everybody, go follow Girl Talk. Make sure you follow us. Um, Girl Talk. Um. Is there? I'm trying to read these comments. Um. A lot of people is bigging you guys up, guys. Sorry if you write a comment and I don't get to it. I do apologize. It's kind of hard to read everything, but I do acknowledge everything, just out, just out, just and I am very appreciative <laughs> of you guys writing. Either. No, if I go in. One, two, three. No. Okay. I have a, there's a question, a, um, a viewer wrote a question. What do you guys want to be known for as being and attorneys? I, what do you want to be known for? Like, what do you want your legacy to be? Yo, entrepreneurship, um, leaving a legacy, teaching kids about entrepreneurship, um, generational wealth, creating it for me, my family, my friends. Um, yeah, it's like that. Black economic empowerment. I really want to have an impact in that space. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to be a revolutionary. Like, I want to change the culture here in Mount Vernon. I think that in Mount Vernon, we all have a sense of imposter syndrome. I don't think we recognize our true value here. Um, and I say that because I say that of myself. Like, you know, walking into these corporate spaces and these very white spaces, I didn't recognize how intelligent I was. I didn't recognize how innovative I was. And when I speak to people here in my brain, I see the same thing. Like we, we minimize our value and I really want to empower the people here to, to recognize like, yo, this joint can be monetized. Okay. Whether it be through entrepreneurship, whether it be through, you know, getting a nine to five and, and, and charging your proper rate. Like I want people to recognize like, yo, you are so powerful. And I feel like we don't, no, we're not told that enough, you know? And, okay. Um, and that's kind of why it's important to me to, to mentor and to speak to people in, in my community. Because I'm like, bro, I came to the understanding that I was powerful and I want other people around me, including okay. my friends. My friends all know this. Like, I speak power into, and I speak life into, like, damn near everybody I interact with because I'm just like, yo, you have so much value. It's about you recognizing it and tapping into it. Okay, so you guys are very much involved. <laughs> it seems like you guys are very much involved in your community. Um, we, do, we do what we can. Yeah, we do what we can. We so, what we can. so for the mentoring and stuff that you um, said, is there somewhere that kids or somebody, if they want to tell their daughter, you know, they seen you, they hear y'all speaking, they want their children maybe to see you, to see, like, look at these black, beautiful women that made it. They didn't, it wasn't a silver golden spoon in their mouth. Um, is there anywhere they can go to see y'all, to meet y'all? Is there any programs that you guys know about? Well, my cousin actually started up with a mentoring program called Greenwood X. So um, maybe I can, if you guys want, you can check out my story. I'll make my page public. Check, check out, out your story, story on what? I'm sorry, Chef, we can't. Check out my Please story. Go. My cousin started up an app called Greenwood that's supposed to, that's connecting people of color with other people in their fields for mentorship. Okay. So it's not just limited to attorneys. That's one. So greenwoodx.org. And literally he's connecting black people who are, you know, successful in their respective fields with students and other black children, whatever. That's one. Two, you can always hit me up personally. Like we can have a conversation. I think oftentimes people feel like, they're scared or something. Right. But link me. Like, I'm going to tell you whatever I could tell you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to tell you whatever I know. Now, if you call me asking me to draft your contract, I'm just going to send you Danielle's business card. And I don't work for free. She doesn't work for free. <laughs> Not even for me. <laughs> I'm like, do you want this contract? She's like, uh, pass we can work. <laughs> I'm done. So, okay. <laughs> um, and Danielle, I've seen that in your, um, I went to your page. I see that you help people with logos. Um, starting up things. Is this true, right? Am I? I know I read that. So, no, I used to have a marketing company, so I'm trying to figure out if you're talking about that. So, I no longer, like, design. I don't have a marketing company no more. Okay. I no longer design logos or anything like that, but I will help you protect that logo. 
which is important. Like people don't realize, hit up a free legal gym. Okay. People don't realize that when you go out and you have a, a designer actually um, create your logo for you, well, they own the copyright in that logo. So you need to transfer that to you. Um, so I help people get their ownership back. I help people trademark their brand and stuff like that. But I don't do the I, I don't do the the um, design and stuff. But their their websites like Upwork.com, um, Guru.com. If you want a cheap logo, Fiverr or what do you call Fiverr, whatever. Dot com. All those <laughs> you can get uh, logos, design, and things like that. Um, or I, I have some dope designers that I I constantly. I continuously work with so um okay connect you reach out yeah okay nice um if there was anything that you guys can change about the law or make a law what would it be reparations <laughs> just give us reparations just, just you know just just level, level the playing field um I don't know. It's so much, you know. Not just work. choose one, your biggest one. When you're working no, with you know people, what? I agree. I think access to capital. Fuck. I mean, excuse me. Uh, all right, girls, no, let's, take <laughs> let's take that one and let's mix it with vodka. I would say access to capital. Like, I mean, law is cool, whatever. But I think what's really holding our people back is access to capital. Yeah. You know, being able to purchase property, being able to open up businesses being able to um, empower ourselves financially and by empowering ourselves financially, being able to have an active voice on the political spectrum, whatever, or political platform, whatever you want to say. Um, but access to capital, you know what I'm saying? Give us the money, not give us. Give us what we're owed. Right. You know? It's not a handout. It's, it's not like... a handout. Okay. Give us what we're owed so that we can take care of our families and do more than that. I don't want to sustain ourselves. I want us to be able to thrive. You know, and working 40 hours a week or whatever. Um, once we're able to do that, and that's kind of why I want to stay in my home, but we're not going to do that. But um, but that's it. And, and that's not just with respect. To, that's not just the legal field. That's just generally, you know. Sister, she want her 40 acres. Yes, me yes. too. And the mule. Don't forget the mule. <laughs> that's all we think it is. Q wrote in the mule at the end. <laughs> oh, okay. QZ. They killed Lincoln, and that's it. And, you know, but um, that's a conversation for a whole new girl talk. Okay. Yes. Have us on next week. We ready. Um, and I apologize because <laughs> I usually start off with, um, I know we guys been, I know we've been in quarantine. I know there's a lot going on. How is your mental health and how, how is your mental health and do you have any suggestions for people that are going through things on how to maybe relieve it or relieve some stress? Yeah. So I mean, right now I'm in a good space um, because, like, first of all, I go to therapy weekly. Right, so that's a. So a therapy part. is not a bad thing, and we should not be afraid to say it. Oh, absolutely not. So I go to therapy weekly, um, and I'm able to work through my things with my therapist. So that's that's helpful. I, I think now that New York is in a semi-open space, and I'm able to actually connect with my like have social interactions with my friends, i.e., sitting right next to her. Um, I think that's been helpful. Um, I started cycling during COVID, so having that physical release okay. has been extremely helpful um, and just keeping my sanity. Yeah, same. I go to therapy every week and it's been amazing. So your mental health is fine because you guys are outreaching, you're working now, you're staying focused, you're still working on your craft, still trying to help the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love what I do. So right. it's like I'm happy in that space as well. Like, I love working with entrepreneurs. I love working with families. So I'm, like, happy through and through. Would right. you suggest... Happiness is intentional. Right. It's very intentional. Would you suggest that everybody try to work on the things that they love? Because it looks like you guys, like, love what y'all do. Y'all smiling. We talking. I could go deep with it. I could go light with it. Uh, would you suggest that everybody try, if you can... To work on the things that we love to make us a little bit happier. Yes, I mean we're fortunate, right? And so let's let's acknowledge that. We speak from a place of privilege. We speak right. from a place of place of privilege. So not everyone is going to be able to do what they love. Right. But I think it's important to acknowledge that happiness is an intentional act. Like, if you want to be happy, you have to take this concerted steps to make yourself happy. Like, and um, 
and I and I say that to say like you know she goes to therapy I go to therapy I meditate I exercise I do the things that I know I enjoy and I make